Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Where Are They Now? Brought to you by the College T-Shirt of the Month Club and the Fanstop.com. Fanstop.com is the number one and only name in the game of Shirt of the Month Clubs for your favorite college or school. I have an awesome guest with me today. He graduated from high school in Alexandria, Louisiana, and he enrolled at the University of Oklahoma in 2005, where he was an instant Sooner standout and would eventually be a contender for several awards like the Jim Thorpe Award, where he, and academically, he received his bachelor's degree in kinesiology. And in 2009, he entered the NFL draft where he was drafted by the Buffalo Bills. Hey, please help me welcome Nick Harris. Nick, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, and yourself? Oh, doing excellent. Right now, it's uh, May, the beginning of May 2020. So we're in Oklahoma, we're wrapping up the coronavirus thing a little bit. We hope stuff's starting to open back up. But I know it's a little different for you in California. So tell us where you are in California and, and how it is right now. Yeah, so I currently reside in downtown Los Angeles, um, across the street from Staples Center. And uh, it's a ghost town. Uh, <laughs> people are, are starting to get uh, unruly, so to speak, um, with the beaches. And they equate um, how much we pay in taxes. We should be able to go to the beaches and this, that, and the other. So and with all that being closed, um, not being able to go dine in, restaurants and bars and this, that, and the other, you know, it's starting to get a little bit uneasy for the most part. Let me ask you this, Nick. Have you ever seen Los Angeles this way or any city this way? I, I can't speak for any city because I've only been in L.A. for the past six days while this has started, but I have not. Um, to be able to get from where I live to the west side to Santa Monica in 10 minutes is unheard of. You know, to get to, to the beach, uh, it's 45 minutes to an hour, no matter, usually. Now it's like you're just on the highway. To go out, and I bike a lot now. I've turned into a cyclist. Um, <laughs> it's, there's no cars on the road. There's no traffic, so you don't have to worry about it. Nothing. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's crazy, man. I hope everything in California starts, um, you know, sh shipping up right and, you know, coming back to normal as best we can. I know there's going to be a whole new normal, but hopefully it gets there sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, hey, we just want to know a little bit about kind of your life after Oklahoma. We all know that you were an awesome Sooner standout, but we want to know what it was after your time at the University of Oklahoma. But before we jump into that, I, we got to know what is your favorite story as an Oklahoma Sooner? Good, bad, or indifferent? Um, the most entertaining story you can think of. <laughs> Well, I can't, I can't speak of, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll speak based on um, one of the, one of my prized possessions was um, national championship game in 2009 against Florida. And um, first off, it was, a, it was a whirlwind um, of trying to get tickets um, with my family, knowing that it was uh, going to be my last collegiate game. Um, so I ended up having to get about 60 tickets. It was, a bunch, it was a bunch of guys who were young who just did get in your family to go, like, you'll go next year, maybe. Uh, we'll figure this thing out. <laughs> um, but me, uh, one of the, the best memories that I have is picking off Tebow um, right before ha halftime um, and going into the south end zone and pointing up and seeing my family in the stands. Um, that was probably one of the, the dopest feelings for me. That's, that's incredible. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I could just imagine that's, that's, that's wild. Um, so kind of the next question I'd like to ask you is, so we know you got drafted in the NFL. Um, what were the first five years after the University of Oklahoma like for you? Can you tell us, kind of walk us through that, how it went? Wild. Um, it was pretty much the first five years for me um, were pretty much like a fish out of water. Um, ultimately, you, you hear things, and for my career, I wanted it to be personally, whether I failed or succeeded, I wanted it to be 100% myself. I didn't want to have to blame anyone this side or the other. Um, so I found my way. Being a kid from Louisiana, going to Oklahoma, and then getting drafted to Buff, up, upstate New York was definitely a change. Um, but I took to the likes of um, T.O. was like one of my mentors. Marshawn was one of my guys. 
um, like still g great friends today. And I just found my way. Um, you you got to build that level of confidence um, to be able to play. So then once you come into your own, okay, I can play in this league, you know, then that's when you start a win or whatever. Then you start to, you know, realize, okay, what the finances of it all, you know, now you're, you're no longer an amateur. You got, you have to, you know, pretty much deal with the amounts of money that's coming in and then the people that are, that are tugging at you and this, that, and the other. So um, uh, for me, fortunately, I had a great, great team with my mom, um, but it was pretty wild. Um, after I left, um, I grad, you know, I graduated, um, played the national championship game. Then we have senior bowl. After senior bowl, then you have combine. And after combine, you have draft. And for me, it was like a crazy three to four months. And my daughter was actually born a week before I got drafted. Um, so, you know, just everything was like a big relief and, you know, somewhat stressful because you have a little person that you have to take care of. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that's a, you know, that's every, that's a whole new world you're going into. You have a family to take care of. I mean, it's probably just every level of stress you can imagine. And, and also joy at the same time too, because you're getting to do something that's, that that's awesome, you know, that you can, that you've dream, dreamt of for how, you know, however many years you were on this planet, you know, at that time. So that's incredible. Um, so, you know, one of the next questions I'd like to ask you is kind of popping back to the University of Oklahoma. So you had played under Bob Stoops. What's one of your favorite Bob Stoops stories? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Fiesta Bowl, um, 2007, I believe. We're playing against West Virginia. And we're out in Arizona. And a lot of, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm adopted um, by a Caucasian family. Um, um, my guidance counselor out of high school, um, they adopted me and this, that, and the other. But they would, follow, they would come to the game games, this, that, and the other. <clears throat> so that would also come to, you know, to the site prior to the, the actual game. So they came to practice. And <laughs> security wouldn't let them in. They were like, well, who are you guys here for? Like, we're, we're Nick Harris' parents. And they're like, well, Nick Harris is black. Um, <laughs> so, so, so they, they like radio Bobby and middle practice, you know, now you see what, what, what's, what's going on? Let him in. What, we're going to fire this guy. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was like, oh man. It's my, my folks. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, that, that's, that's hilarious, Nick. Um, so, you know, I had to jump back to that because I was, I was curious on that for sure. Um, so, you know, can you give us an idea? Like, what are you doing now? What is it? What is Nick Harris doing now? This is 2020. Give us, give us kind of an overview of what you're doing now. Yeah, well, the segue that I found and the pivot that I found post my playing career um, was not necessarily to actually put my degree field into, into play. Um, I kind of got lucky, honestly. Um, I currently work for EA Sports, so I, do, I shoot all of the motion capture for Madden, the Madden gaming system. So I'm a, all the defensive movements in the actual game for the past three years have been myself. Um, also, in the entertainment industry, um, on camera, I shoot various commercials, um, Old Spice, Gatorade, Nike. Um, and I've shot two major films, um, The Best Man Holiday with Morris Chestnuts and I Lathan, and I've also shot Focus with Will Smith and Margot Robbie. Um, so that pretty much is what I've done living out here in Los Angeles. Um, and I would be remiss if I said, like, this is something that I actually, you know, I, it was like I had to work and, you know, no, I really got lucky. It was one of those deals that kind of just fell into my lap post me playing. That, that's awesome. So... What was it? Can you go a little bit more into the EA Sports just a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So a lot of people don't necessarily know, like when you when you play the game, whether it's whether it's Call of Duty or EA or it's baseball, <clears throat> those movements from those characters in the game are from an actual human being. Um, so what they do is they put us in a suit and they put us on a green screen with all these cameras and monitors, about five thousand. And they track our movements for everything that we do. I shoot up in Vancouver. I got to go there <clears throat> about eight times a year, uh, you know, and we, we, and they block it off in different segments of different things we need to do defensively, offensively, from, you know, grabbing a, a Gatorade bottle to throwing your helmet. You know, everything has been, everything is, um, 
is docked and, and slated and, and, you know. That's, that's pretty awesome. Are you doing the yep. victory dances too? Victory dance, all the celebrations, <laughs> all of that. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's fun. It's really, it's a long day. You know, we go from like 7 a.m. to about 5 p.m playing football for like eight days straight that's you know that's a lot of football um but it's i mean it's it's really 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 a dope gig extremely privileged to be able to do something like this you know and then you'd be surprised the amount of phone calls hey man can i uh, listen i don't know <laughs> that's how this that, that, that's uh that's pretty cool i don't think a lot of people knew exactly what went into creating like madden and uh, NCAA oh sports football, like yeah, a whole bunch of stuff goes into that. That's that's pretty cool. So so tell us how, you know how you're doing in this, like the the commercials, and you just you just kind of got into that. Like tell us a little bit about your commercials and your movies, your acting. We'd like to know a little bit about that. Um, so for ultimately, what happened was they have it's called choreographed football, and with the different scenes, um, with the um with like our handlers they would much rather you know get guys that have played so whereas like okay we can we can go in read a card and get the actual shot that they need so say for instance in best man holiday um he was playing uh, more chefs and was a running back with the new yorker giants and then we were like minnesota something and it was like just different action scenes that you need to get but you can't get novice people in there because you can get someone hurt you've got these guys that are making five hundred hundred thousand dollars for you know and you, you want to trust the guys that you have, um, i.e. with focus. Um, my scene in particular was whenever they were in the shoot, we shot that in New Orleans. Um, and there was a specific scene whenever he was betting um, with a guy from Tokyo. Like a, it was like a million dollars a play. He was like, hey, I bet you a million dollars he'll get a first down and set. You know, and we got to do, you know, set these scenes up and then and be able to reenact them over and over and over and over again. That's that's really cool. So that's a it's like you found your your own niche in in Hollywood and it's really cool stuff. I yeah, mean, a lot of people don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, what what goes into it, you know? Yeah, that that's really incredible. Um, so hey, the one of the last questions I have for you is like, where can people find you now? Like Instagram, YouTube. What are you doing? Tell us where people can find you. Um, well, um, IG is, uh, my ad is uh, at my name, N-I-C, last name Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S, and then number five. Um, my Facebook has been the same since we had to have uh, collegiate email addresses before your grandmother could get one. Um, so it's just my name, Nick Harris. And that's really all that I have currently. Um, and uh, yeah, but it's pre it pretty much serves as my platform. I have all the links and everything that you can, you know, go through there and, and this, that, and the other. And it's open, you know, it's open, it's not private. That, that's awesome. So, Nick, one of the last things that this is probably the last question we'll hit is, you know, you mentioned your daughter. So what's we like to know a little bit about family. What's your daughter doing now? How old is she? Do you got any more kids? Like, tell us a little bit about your family. My daughter's 11. She's my greatest creation, man. She's um, she's me with hair. Um, she's currently in private school out in Burbank. Um, and she's currently experiencing the longest summer ever. <laughs> yeah. She, if I was a kid right now, I wouldn't be complaining at all. I'm yeah, like, I mean, I'm unfortunately. Summer yeah. since March. Yeah, so it's the longest summer ever. She's like, oh, it's, it's, I'm, you know, try to sit her down. She's old enough to explain and explain to her, like, what's going on. It's fine. <laughs> she's, it's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Whatever. It's just, <laughs> yeah, whatever. So let me ask you this, Nick when the coronavirus is like it's over everything's open back up what restaurant are you hitting first the very first restaurant i'm going to go to is mastro's in malibu on a beach and i'm going to order a tomahawk steak with asparagus and drink about four glasses of water <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you, you have that planned out exactly i like that that's the man who yeah, likes no it. idea as, as soon as they open up the res the, re the reservation portal, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get a reservation. <laughs> How soon are you going to hit the beach? Oh, um, I'll probably give it about a week, week and a half. Um, living here, it's it's kind of hard not to. Yeah. You know, it's you know, you go out and we have so many. You got Laguna, Huntington Beach, San Clemente, Santa Cruz. You know, so it's like. And we pay taxes for the beach and the mountains. <laughs> gotta, gotta go use, the, use that up. 
You got to go use it. That, that's a little different than, uh, you know, Lake Texoma back in your time at uh, Oklahoma. No, we did. What did we do? We did a South Padre Island. Okay. All that's right. what we did. And listen, if COVID wasn't there, then I don't know what we're experiencing now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's awesome, Nick. Man, we really appreciate you coming on today with us. We've had a, a great time chatting and talking. Uh, thank you for answering some questions that we have. Um, man, just really appreciate it. We're going to put your Instagram handles and, and Facebook up on the uh, up on the show notes and stuff so people can find you, follow you, uh, and really just keep up with you from now on. Uh, man, we really appreciate you. Thank you, Nick. No, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. All right, man. I appreciate you. Hey, once again, this has been Where Are They Now? Brought to you by thefanstop.com, the only name in the college shirt of the month club game. Oh, <laughs>